Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhan Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhan Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mishpa Paramahansa Paradigai Charja Ashto Tarot of Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Shri Laisi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Shri Prabhupada Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to Shiguru and Garanga He wrote the verse. Can you get it? Oh, there it is. All right. Can everyone see it? All right. Oh, can you open that other door and pull a curtain? The sun has changed its position, so we don't need those curtains anymore. It's getting, the days are getting shorter. Narayanam <laughs> Namaskritya. Narang Chaiv Narottamam Deving Sarasvati Vyasam Tato Jai Madhiri Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being, unto Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the Author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our, our spiritual master. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Anashta Prayesha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Mbhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय On this 29th day of August 2018 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 4, The Creation of the Fourth Order. We are just completing Chapter 4, Sati Quits Her Body. Text number 34. Tar alatai hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguyaka. Hanyamana disho bejur. Ushadn beer brahmate desa. Tar alatai hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguyaka. Hanyamana disho bejur. Ushadn beer brahmate desa. Tar alatai hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguyaka. Hanyamana disho bejur. Ushadn beer brahmate desa. Tar alata hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguhika. Hanyamana disho beju. Ushad bhi brahmate desa. Tar alata hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguhika. Hanyamana disho beju. Ushad bhi brahmate desa. Tar alata hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguhika. Hanyamana disho beju. Ushad bhi brahmate desa. Kindu. Tar alata hudai sarve. Pramata sahaguhika. Anyamana disho beju. Ushad bhi brahmate desa. Thai, by then, alata ayudhai, with weapons of firebrands. Sarve, all. Pramata, the ghosts. Sahaguyaka, along with the guhikas. Hanyamana, being attacked. Tishaha, in different directions. Bejuhu, fled. Ushadbi, glowing. Brahmate desa, by Brahminical power. Translation. When the Rubhu demigods attacked the ghosts and Guryakas with half burned fuel from the Yajna fire, all these attendants of Sati fled in different directions and disappeared. This was possible simply because of Brahma Tejas, Brahminical power. So whose Brahminical power was it? Remember? Vrigu. Vrigu. Purport. The word Brahma Tejasa used in this verse is significant. In those days, Brahmins were so powerful that simply by desiring and by chanting a Vedic mantra, they could accomplish very wonderful effects. But in the present age of degradation, there are no such Brahmins. According to the Pancharatrika system, in this age the entire population is said to consist of Shudras, because the Brahminical culture has been lost. But if anyone displays the signs of understanding Krishna consciousness, he should be accepted, according to Vaishnav Smriti regulations, as a prospective Brahmin and should be given all facilities to achieve the highest perfection. The most magnanimous gift of Lord Chaitanya's is that the highest perfection of life is available in this fallen age if one simply adopts the process of chanting Hare Krishna, which is able to bring about 
the fulfillment of all activities in self-realization. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth canto, fourth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Sati Quits Her Body. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So I reviewed this chapter since we have now completed chapter 4 of the fourth canto. And as you may recall, it begins with uh, Sati wanting to uh, go to this function that Daksha was performing, another big sacrifice, and a transcendental, not so transcendental, but a uh, heavenly planet soiree. Uh, and Shiva was dead against, against her going, because he could foresee that she would be disrespected by her father, and because her father disrespected him, all the others would disrespect her, except her mother and her sisters. And this would be very uh, painful for, her, for Sati. So he forbade her to go. He advised her not to go. And she, and she was going back and forth. One, she wanted to obey her husband, her glorious husband. But on the other side, she was very anxious to go and meet you know, her friends and to hopefully pass things up with her father. So she ends up going, uh, just taking off. It describes here that she was so upset with Sati, that, uh, Siva Shiva, that she was staring at him as if she were to burn him in the ashes. It describes like that. Uh, in any case, as if she were going to blast him with her vision. That's the phrase Prabhupada uses. So she left in a more or less a huff, all on her own, and immediately all of uh, Shiva's attendants accompanied her, provided her with a nice vehicle, and carried her, and guarded her, and like that. So when she gets to the arena of sacrifice, uh, she was ignored by Daksha. But you get this scene that he wouldn't even look at her, or whatever, you know. And because of that, none of, uh, you remember the phrase Prabhupada used, of Duchess flatterers would uh, also greet uh, uh, Sati. But she was greeted with great, you know, a lot of tears and embraces by her uh, mother and her sister. But Sati was not really happy with that. And so she began uh, to berate her father. Uh, Lord Shiva is the most beloved of all living entities. So she's directly speaking, you know, truth to power here, so to speak. And she's uh, invincible because she has the power of this self-immolation. And uh, so Daksha doesn't say a word. He just stands there and takes the whole thing. And she goes on and on with her glorification of Shiva and her uh, berating her, her father. And after some verses, quite a few verses of that, she sits down and she's conversing with the, with the process of yoga. And she starts controlling the air and she calls uh, the uh, fiery element up within her body and boom, she turns in blazing fire and she's nothing but ash. So there's a big tumult that takes place. The, the, her her uh, servants are uh, aghast and very angry and then what happens at the end here, they attack, but Brigamuni sees the danger and he calls forth his, these ribus, uh, a certain class of demigods, uh, who then do his bidding and defend, you know, Daksha and the others and all of, of, of uh, Sati's uh, attendants, they flee. They go back to Shiva. But that's not the end of it, as we'll see in the next chapter. Because although Brigu uh, has this Brahmatejas, this Brahminical power, which is very formidable, they can call forth uh, by mantric power, you know, these ribus, or we saw it with uh, um, Durvasa, where he could call forth a Kritya, a big, a big uh, demoness, actually, fiery demoness, to try to burn Ambarish. There's all kinds of powers that these uh, Brahmins uh, can acquire by their austerity, by their focus, by their chanting, chanting of mantras. Uh, but then we'll see in the next chapter that ultimately that uh, Daksha and all his minions are defeated by Virabhadra. And then he comes back, I think he's also with the, with the other attendants, the Guyakas and the ghosts and the Pramatas and all. And so there's a devastation there with Daksha, at Daksha's place. But the lesson here Prabhupada uh, calls to mind in the last purport here that uh, 
in this age, we're, we're pretty hopeless in terms of trying to achieve perfection by any of the processes that worked in the previous age. Prabhupada explains in his lectures in chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita how we're completely unqualified to practice this Ashtanga Yoga process, which Krishna outlines in that chapter. And going alone to a remote place that has to be holy and sanctified, where you're going to find it, you have to go to India, maybe go to the Himalayas, and, and then you know, sitting and, and drilling the respiration, you have to have the right seat. Uh, you, know, you know, there's a certain uh, reason why it has to be a certain deer skin. You know, you, you ever, maybe you don't know the reason. It's kind of interesting, you know. Yeah, because you're sitting down in a lonely place. As, as Krishna says in that chapter, you have to be devoid of fear. Well, can you imagine going to a jungle which is full of, you know, lions and tigers and, and, and poisonous snakes, and you're going to sit down to meditate. Where is it going to be a peace of mind? You know, you're always going to hear some sound. It says, oh, maybe some animal is coming, you know. So if you sit on... Uh, deer skin, that has a, a certain chemical effect that it repels these animals. We don't have to worry, we sit, we'll sit here. <laughs> but the, so, you know, all this trouble and going on, and then working directly with the mind like that, and, and the, and the, the uh, respiration with the pranayama and all that. It's very, very few who can achieve any kind of uh, success in that, in that line. So it's definitely not for the mas masses. So that's uh, the, the dhyana yoga system uh, in previous ages. That was uh, Satya Yuga. In the Treta Yuga, you had elaborate sacrifices being performed, like Daksha's performing here. The first one was going on for thousands of years, if you remember. <laughs> the one where he insulted Shiva. And, you know, you don't have, as Prabhupada explains in the previous purport, you have the mantras are there, but you don't have the chanters, the qualified chanters. And without the qualified chanters, you can create havoc because all of the syllables have to be precisely chanted. And all so that's not going to work. And then in, previous, in the previous Yuga Dwarpa, you have the elaborate deity worship, but with the present, uh, you know, you had, you had deity worship pretty, quite advanced in India, and then you have the invasions of the Mughals, and then the British come, you know, and, and, and loot the temples of all the, you know, practically all the temples were looted of their valuable gems and all these different things. It's impossible. It's, it just, it's not going to happen. And, and people aren't uh, geared to that. They're too much involved in getting and spending and just trying to survive, especially in this Kali Yuga. So Kali Yuga is this famous ocean of faults. This is in, explained in the 12th chapter. After, after several chapters, actually, of describing the, the faults of this age, how th things will become degraded, b bodily strength will become degraded, intelligence will become degraded, you live less, uh, your longevity will decrease again uh, more and more. From, from 100,000 in Isachi to 10,000 in Dwarpa to 1,000 in, uh, 10, in Treta to 1,000 in Dwarpa Yuga to about 100 and going down from there in this, in this Yuga. So that's a big thing. You don't live very long. So physical strength, mental strength, intelligence, purity, all of these will degrade in Kali Yuga. So it's, quali it's qualified as an ocean of faults, uh, dosha nidhe, dosha nidhe, kalir dosha nidhe rajan, asti eko mahad guna. But there's very one good quality in this age, kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sangam param vajet. Just by the chanting of Krishna's names, kirtana deva krishna, mukta sangha, you become free from material attachment and material association, you become liberated, and param vajet, you go to the supreme destination. So this is a, a great blessing uh, given by Krishna in his form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, this is, uh, it reconciles everything. You know, we don't have to worry about the fact that we can't perform these sacrifices. We don't have to pay any attention at all to the Karmakanda section of the Vedas. It's very easy to get diverted even in, in, in a whole forest of Vedic stuff, you know to spend a lot of time studying Vedanta Sutra, which we're not really qualified to do, to get absorbed in the Upanishads, which talk about Brahman mostly, you know, and uh, what about the Tantra? Do I need to know about Buddhism and all that stuff? You, without a guide, you're lost. I remember in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, I started to be interested in spiritual life. So I went here, I went there. I, got a, I remember reading this book on uh, high Buddhism. This, uh, this uh, Buddhist named Milarepa, he was a, a leader of that. Real austere, you know, uh, practicing great austerities. 
he was known as the the nettle swami or something because he just ate nettles and his body turned green and then he had some potency uh, there was a trout and he was able to call forth the rain you know and this was a big deal and uh, but mostly it was about voidism you know of, of, of merging into the void the whole thing yeah I, I got diverted into that you know without a guide and I went to the library and there were these whole I remember this whole green set I forget what what, what set of the Upanishads they had been translated by some probably British scholar you know and I got into that a little bit you know and one thing after another this was, this was my age and it's still going on it's so so it's uh, it's a forest of confusion, you know. And when Lord Chaitanya went to South India, it's described as Dharma Sutta was talking about the crocodiles, the crocodiles of false philosophies ready to swallow you up, you know, <laughs> Buddhism, you know, and Mayavad, my various uh, divisions of Mayavad philosophy, hedonism. It's so easy to get involved in that today. That's that's the prevailing philosophy. You don't even know it's a philosophy, but that's what they're living. Hedonism? <laughs> Hedonism means if it, it feels good, do it. <laughs> you know. Uh, there's another variety of that that's a little less severe that the, 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 the greatest good for the greatest number. You know, this is like a social philosophy. But what's the good? That's what you have to determine. The good is, oh, a nice job, peace, you know, material peace, uh, family life, you know, material pleasure. And maybe in a little up above the mode of passion and ignorance we have, you know, but that's uh, the point. Is we're just uh, blind without without this uh, understanding. So Srila Prabhupada came with the holy name and this Bhagavatams, you know, and, and an ocean of knowledge. And behind him, he had the whole parampara, he had Lord Chaitanya and Krishna, to to you know bring the light. This wonderful verse: Krishna is Vadamo Pagate Dharma Gyanan Devi Saha Kalo Nashta Drishyam Esha Puranaka Odanodar. In this age, Nashta Drishyam, the vision has been destroyed. People are blind. They have no idea. They have no idea that their real goal in their life should be God, should be Vishnu. No. So they get involved in external, uh, what is that? Svartik me Vishnu. Durashayaye bahirata manina. This is a verse by Pallad Maharaj preaching to his father fearlessly. That uh, those who are too absorbed in materialistic life who is, the senses are uncontrolled, who are entering dark into more and more darkness because they're just chewing, the, the chewed again and again. Such persons have no idea that God is the goal of life. Nateva svarta katim. This word svarta is so important for us. Ramana, what does svarta mean in this context? Svarta is made of two words. Sva, arta. Any idea? Zach? No, no. No, well, no. arta means a goal, a valuable goal, and sva means your your actual of, of yourself of your of the soul, the goal of the soul. You can easily memorize it there, rather than just the goal of our conditioned mind and our senses. And in other words, uh, it's not money, it's not material things, it's not fame, it's not any of these things. It's understanding of who you really are, reestablishing relationship with the supreme personality of Godhead, acting in that relationship and escaping from this bondage of birth and death and going back to God. That's your real svarta. It's, 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 it's uh, compressed in the words, word Vishnu. In other words, that's the goal, is God. So, because I have no idea, not tebidu, they don't know, means they don't know, nobody knows, except the bodhis. Uh, you gotta have goals, you know, you're born with that. You're, 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 you're brought into this world again and again to try to achieve your unfulfilled goals from previous life. So, bahirata manina, adurashiya means can never be fulfilled. Bah external goals, bahirata manina. And you're encouraged in this illusion by other blind people, beginning with your parents, your teachers, your priests, you know, your friends, the TV, the internet, everything. So you're completely convinced of this wrong philosophy. That's called andayatanda, the blind leading the blind. And therefore, everybody, the teachers and the students and everybody involved remains bound up tightly by, ma by material life. So this Prabhupada's mission uh, was to cut those bond that bondage, to bring light to the benighted souls of this age. So he came, and this beautiful song written by my old god brother, Kushukrata, Shri Shri Navadvip Para Pradipa Sandip Yamana Satato Bhuviha Chaitastamo Hantihi Yasya Yatnan. 
the Mami Tamshi Prabhupada, Dave, my off my base in the Srila Prabhupada, who took the lamp of Navadvipa, Lord Chaitanya, Shishi Navadvipa Pada Pradipa, he lit it, you know, he took it brightly to the Western world. And even though it was very difficult, those who were ready to listen to him, they became uh, enlightened. Uh, Sandipyamana Satatobu Vihya Chaitasta Mohantihi I said, destroying the darkness in the hearts of, of all those who would listen and, and be submissive. So it's, uh, it's become very simple, but the, 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 say, the, the principle of liberation through transcendental sound is central to our, our practice, as, as we all know. Uh, and and the, throughout the Bhagavatam, the glories of the chanting of the holy name are spoken. Uh, how wonderful it is. You remember that beautiful verse by uh, Devahuti to uh, Kapila Dev? Hoho bata shopacho do gariyan yajigva gre vartate nama tubhyam te pustabaste juhuvu sasnaraya brahmanachu nama gunanti yete. So, aho is, a, is an expression of wonder in Sanskrit. Aho, how amazing it is. Uh, Aho, but uh, shwapacho. Shwapacho are the dog cookers, dog eaters, even the dog eaters. How glorious they are if on the tip of their tongue the name is vibrating. Aho, aho, but uh, shwapacho to gariyan yajigva gre vartate namatubhyam. In previous life, they must have bathed in all the holy places, performed all these sacrifices and austerities, studied all the Vedic literatures, to come to this point, even being born as a dog eater, but chanting your holy name, which is the... the so this, uh, you know, uh, and what, what so many uh, colored ocean are they rajan? There's, uh, there's uh, age is an ocean of faults, but there is this one uh, redeeming factor. So we should take advantage of it. Srila Prabhupada, as explained in previous classes, he had great faith in the chanting of the holy name to push back the darkness, even in the united Western world. And it, it wasn't easy to get, you know, the chanting. First you went to Dr. Mishra's place. You know, he could chant, but you can't speak. Can't explain the holy name and get people, you know. So it's, not, not, it's necessary to also have a prabhachan, a kirtan, and also explanation. Uh, philosophy is necessary. You feel something, you get into the chanting, well, what is, what is it? You know, it's easy to divert into, into illusion from if, if you just chant. In our, you know, just chanting is the ultimate goal. But, but our minds are filled with all kinds of material ideas, which we're ready to superimpose on what I just felt from the chanting. You know? And that's why you have the sahajiya sects, you have all kinds of upasampadayas that don't relate to the shastra. What is that verse? We should know this verse. Shruti, smriti, puranari, panchadatra, vading, vina, aikantiki, hare, bhakti, bhakti, utpata, eva, kalpate. What does it mean? Shruti, smriti, puranari. Disturbance in society. Yeah. Any so called hare, bhakti, you know, devotion to God. That's devoid of relationship with the shru with the shrutis, the Vedas, the Upanishads, with the Smriti uh, books like Bhagavad Gita and Puranas like the Bhagavatam, Pancharatra, also the deity worship. It's just a disturbance in society. This is a very important verse for us, because the tendency is see the human tendency uh, in anything is is to uh, try to try to cheat, meaning that I like the result. I see the devotees are very blissful. I like the prasadam. I like all that. <laughs> are you kidding? No, no, no illicit sex and intoxication. You know, I also like that, right? Because you're, you're materially conditioned. So therefore, you ch you, you 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 don't want to hear all of this heavy philosophy and all this stuff. I don't need that. I'm just going to just chant. I'll take what I want out of it. You know, and that's called the logic of half a hen. Damodar explained the logic of half. You know, the half hen logic. Ardha kukuti nyaya. Literally, half hen logic. There's no way you can explain it. This is probably your first heard about. It. Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> yeah, the Dharma, sometimes it said that his farmer had this magical hen which was giving him golden eggs, <laughs> even just regularly. So, unfortunately, he's got this special hen, you know, giving him golden eggs, but he's not very bright. <laughs> so, he, so, even though the gold 
you know, is in, in, in plenty valuable, and you can you can you know create a nice little uh, arena for the hen, feed him with the finest uh, hen food, whatever it is. No, he he he, he thinks. Well, I can get even more money. Um, I have to pay for this feed that I'm feeding to this hen. So I'll just cut off the head of the hen, but he won't eat anything, and he'll continue to give the gold. So that's half hen logic. <laughs> I mean, or it's dumb. So similarly, we have the, the Bhagavatam, which is full of all kinds of philosophy, uh, or Bhagavad Gita, right? So I really like I really like the part where it just says, you know, uh, chant and you become perfect. You know, I really like the part where the gopis are singing and this and that. But I don't like the part, you know, where it says Punksastriyam Bhavanita. I like my girlfriend. This one, this one says, oh, you have sex life. You know, and then you get entangled in your family and all this, and this is what increases your entanglement. In other words, it's uh, what Krishna says. Natatasya bhavain moho bandas chanya pasangata yoshit sangajita pungso yatatat sanga sangitaha. This is a real nice brahmachari verse. Uh, where he says, actually, he, he speaks this verse twice with one word different. In the 11th canto, he says, Natatasya bhavain klesho. So instead of bandha, he says klesho. He says, there's nothing that brings as much bondage uh, uh, or misery uh, as association with lusty women or with men who are too attached to women. No, the, the Kapila Dev says, and then Krishna's, and the 11th canto, the uh, Uddhava Gita. So, that, so that's, not, that's not very cool verse. I mean, what about my girlfriend? What about my girlfriends? <laughs> so I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll cut that one out. I'm not going to read that. You know, I don't even need the class at all. You know, let's just have a, a kirtan starting about 8 o'clock and going to 12. And, uh, you know, and we'll go for it like that. From anyway, there are a whole bunch of sects, as you well know, in Bengal, who are... Uh, Basically, they don't want the shastra, but they like the kirtan. They like this because it's so powerful, you know. That's th that's called uh, shruti smriti. That's a disturbance in society. A disturbance in society. So uh, we need both. We need to learn the the philosophy behind the the chanting. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati uh, preached very much uh, nam mahima glorification of the holy name. Which way you're going to get it? You get it from the shastra. Because this uh, increases our desire to chant and our appreciation for the chanting. Because otherwise, the, the mad mind, you chant a little bit, and the mind is wandering, okay, let it wander. You don't understand you know, the, the, the importance. And, and it's true of, of anything. If, if a person, if, if you're walking by this door here, and you're hearing the class, and your name comes up, you'll probably stop, turn back, and say, well, what are they saying about me? Right? So glorification is attractive to the glorified. This is why we keep glorifying Krishna genuinely from the heart. And that's attractive to Krishna. So Krishna and the Holy Name are non-different. Abhinnatvannamanamino. There's another verse about the Holy Name. Abhinnatvannamanamino. That there's no difference or there's no separation between the name and the named. You know, this is, this is an advanced understanding. If you're really uh, advancing the chanting... Prabhupada defined the perfection is that you'll understand that there's no difference between the name of Krishna and Krishna himself. So, uh, therefore, the holy name is a person. And if you glorify the holy name, then you'll be more attracted to chant. And when you chant, the name will show you more mercy and give you more taste. It works like that. Therefore, I'm going to give you this nice little uh, ashtika that you haven't heard for a while. Maybe, I don't know if you've ever heard it, uh, Jamal. The Kaval Ashtika. This is written by uh, an associate or a disciple of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. We, uh, for a long time we thought it was anonymous, but uh, Suki Bhakta wrote me from, in, from India one time. He, he, spends, he used to spend a lot of time in Vrindavan. He said, we found out who wrote this Kaval Ashtika. And it, I forget his name now, but I can let you know. And it turns out it wasn't an Ashtika. There were a hundred verses, and these eight that are pulled out that are known as Kapalashtika were somebody's favorites that have a special quality. So here they are. Madaram, Madare Biopi, Mangale Biopi, Mangalam, Pavanam, Pavanam Biopi, Hare Nama Iva Kavalam, 
Now that last line should be uh, familiar. That's the last line from Harinama Harinama. So he says, of sweet things, it's the sweetest you will taste at any time. Of things that bring good fortune, it's the perfect paradigm. Of things that purify, it purifies most powerfully. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. That be. Abramastambaparyantam sarvam mayamayam jagat satyam satyam punak satyam hadirnamayva kevalam. Now you know how Bhakti Notaku in one song he says there's nothing in existence in all 14 worlds or three worlds than the holy name. A, so this is, he may be inspired by that since he was associated with a disciple of Bhakti Vinod. So he says, uh, from Brahma's realm atop the sky down to the lowly grass, illusion reigns in Maya Devi's treacherous morass. The truth, the truth, the only truth, the name of Shri Hari, the holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Saguru Sapita Mata, uh, Saguru Sapita Mata, Bandha, oh, oh God, Saguru Sapita, Bandha Boma, uh, forget the answer. Uh, he's the guru, he's the father, he's the friend most true. She And she's the real mother who most kindly teaches you to always chant and hear the holy name of Shihari. The holy name of Shihari is surely all that be. Now the next one is my favorite, so listen up. Nikshvasena hi vishvaso kadarudho bhavishyati kirtaneya mata balyad hare nama evakevalam. Remember, Tamara, remember that our, that our final breath may come at any time, no matter if we're old and sick or in our youthful prime. So young and old alike should chant the name incessantly. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Hari Siddhavasi Tatra Yatra Bhagavata Jana Gayanti Bhakti Bhavena Hari Nama Evakevalam. Lord Shri Hari forever dwells wherever devotees whose hearts are fixed on him and free of all impurities uplift their voices high and sing his name in ecstasy. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Aho dukkam maha dukkam dukkha 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 taram mitha kachartam vishmatam ratna hare nama eva kevalam. Alas, what sorrow, what great pain, the worst calamity for people to forget the holy name of Shri Hari. Although the name's a priceless gem, mere broken glass they see. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Diyatam diyatam karno, niyatam niyatam vajaha, giyatam giyatam nityam hare nama eva kevalam. Just fill your ears, with, just fill them with the name of Shri Hari. Just chant the name, just chant the name with all sincerity. Just sing the name, just sing the holy name eternally. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Uh, what is it? Uh, I forget the Sanskrit, sorry. It makes this world appear like bits of straw upon the ground. Resplendently it reigns supreme divinity and sound. It's filled with transcendental bliss and peerless purity. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. And then thinking that this was an anonymous poem and not having a Palashruti, since it really wasn't written as an Ashtaka, I made up my own little Palashruti, which is my prayer. Um, Inspired to glorify the holy name of Shri Hari, a certain sage composed this hymn in Sanskrit poetry. I pray that those who hear this lowly version made by me will chant the holy name of Shri Hari in ecstasy. It's a prayer. So that's just a drop in the ocean of verses glorifying the holy name. It's good to know these. That's why Shikshastik has said we should, read, we should chant it every day. Those who sing it, it says right in the CC. You'll, 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 the Polish Shruti for that was, again, it wasn't written as an Ashtaka. You know, it's scattered in the Pajavali and it was drawn together maybe by Krishna's Kaviraj, I think it was, into what we have as the Shikshastika. But then at the end, after, I think, that whole uh, presentation in the 20th chapter where he gives Lord Chaitanya's commentary on it, he says at the end, I, think, I don't know the Bengali, uh, and I don't know if I know the English, <laughs> Boy, my brain is going. You know. Yeah, but what's the first part? This, this, this. Um, and uh, Himloche Tanya wrote to give the, the practice and the goal of chanting Krishna's holy name. Day by day, whoever sings this hymn will surely reach a little closer to perfection. Spotless Krishna Prem. Prem and name. They rhyme. So, uh, 
this is all just by way of, 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 of requesting you or encouraging you to read about the glories of the holy name and memorize some nice shlokas and chant them into, and then you'll find when you enter into kirtan and you're chanting the, 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 your japa that uh, it's easier to focus that you get some mercy from the holy name some of the prayers Rupa Goswami he prays directly to the holy name for taste this wonderful uh, verse and I'll, and I'll stop at the end of uh, the, the uh, Nam Ashtaka, which is the source of our wonderful little Kirtaniya's uh, name, Madhuri Pura. Nada de vino driven a sodomi near Yasa Madhuri Pura, Tum Krishna Makamam Spodome, Rasane, Rase, and Sada. O holy name, you are the inspiration for the vina of Narada, uh, and you are a, a, a flood of the, of the essence of the most sweetest nectar. Uh, o holy name, Please always appear on my tongue. Let me my, my tongue uh, uh, chant you with the greatest taste. Always, let me have to, oh, uh, eternal taste for chanting. That's the idea. You were going to say, but we have to go ahead. Someone has to take it around. So we were saying before. Um, it's a simple question, but about my bodies. So. Obviously, they don't call themselves Mayavadis, so what would they call their philosophy and what would we call ours in a technical Sanskrit term? What do they call their philosophy? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Because I've heard, I've heard, I was talking with one Indian young boy, yeah, and they'd say Advaita, 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 all these, yeah, yeah all these different terms. But they would say, Ramavad. They would say Dvaita. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. The Advaitins. Ad advait Advaitins. And we would call ourselves Vaishnavs. But our our specific like philosophy, like there's the Advaita, 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 and dualists. Yeah. Or wha what are we? Yeah. In the technical term. Um. Should Should Advaitas? Should it pure, pure dualists. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, a chincha beta babies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, simultaneously one and different. I mean, let's try to resolve that. I think should advaita is a little too extreme for us. That that you know, there's no. You know that, that we're completely different from from Narayan. We're not into that. One with the yeah. same and different. So. Um, yeah, I was. You were talking about the, um, the different. It's just a comment, but the different uh, groups. They just say, "Oh, forget about the books. Let's just have yeah, the yeah. kirtan." Yeah. And forget that. Forget about the books means also forget about the relative principles. You know, we'll just have kirtan. You know. Oftentimes it means that. Um. So. Well, not all of them. Yeah. I mean, two of them would be really good with <laughs> meat eating and uh, gambling. Meeting and gambling, we don't do. Yeah, so um, what? Uh, I was hearing Bhakti Vikash on me, you know, and he was he was saying, yeah, you know, if maybe what we should do is we should just take the Bhagavatam, and we'll just cut out all the controversial um, statements and all the politically incorrect statements, but and then and then it'll become a lot, you know, abbreviated, a lot shorter. Yes. And then we could sell it easily, easier, you know. But then he said, "But if we if we cut out all those statements, there'll be practically no Bhagavatam left, you know, because you know a lot of the statements." So yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's that's you know along the yard, the crooked nyaya nyaya type mood. Is that? Uh, and that's you know that's it's a constant uh, threat. I mean, when you have uh, the history even of Western religion is why, where do you think uh, now? Why do we have these mega churches? You know, what are they preaching different? Uh, suddenly, people are very interested in following the the the, uh, the, the, the life and life and teachings of Christ. Yeah, right. No, it's because they watered everything down, and it becomes just a, a, a place where you can you know have your material desires fulfilled. That's where the origin of this prosperity theology. You know, the proof that you're pious is that you're rich. The richer you are, the pious, more pious you are. Is that a philosophy, even in Christianity. 
Lord, Lord Jesus was always exalting the poor. The last will be first, right? Take care of the poorest amongst you. But you got these so-called evangelists and whatever, you know, cutting, cutting the budget for, you know, just feeding the poor. You know? Is that, well, they're poor, that means they're sinful. Isn't that our philosophy? Sinful reaction? Anyway, that's, there's a, the, the material uh, mind is always ready to jump up and, and, and infect the pure philosophy. And that's true of, of any age. And that's why we've had Lord Chaitanya disappeared and what happened to uh, Chaitanya Vaishnavism for hundreds of years. It was eclipsed. Like the Notaku couldn't even get a copy of the CC for years. You know? It was that had become that uh, obscured. And, you know, it, it, it thought, oh, that's an excuse for lascivious acting because of Krishna's Leela and all that, you know. So it took, it took a tremendous effort on his part and, of course, Bhaktisiddhanta and, and, and Srila Prabhupada to give it as it is. And, and we have to maintain that. We can't water it down in the name of, you know, bridge preaching and uh, find ourselves, you know, whatever happened to the morning program? You, know, you go to some temples, hello, anyone out there? How are you, Krishna? What happens? Anyone else have a question? Go ahead. So, so I'm not, I don't think anybody <laughs> uh, actually has a definite answer to this question, but I'd still like to hear your thoughts. Um, or something, close something Shastri. Um, so, in the middle of your lecture, you, were talk you said um, those who don't have a guide are constantly lost. And you're talking about hopping from philosophy to philosophy, like, oh, well, I'll try this out, and I'll go study this, and I'll go study this, and oh, I don't agree with something in here. Even though I've been practicing it, I'll just go here. So I'm genuinely curious as to what the end result would be um, and after one's life um, jumping around like that from thing to thing and not really uh, settling down into a specific... Well, it depends on what you get into, you know, what because you uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, if you're on your own and you don't, you don't, you don't understand the, the, uh, the basic principle of the need for a guide, spiritual master. I mean, the example is given by Arjun. This is an exalted soul, but it, you know, giving us an example of his emotions were, were, were informing or affecting his understanding of the philosophy. He had a whole philosophy behind it, leaving the battlefield. You know, I don't want to incur sin by killing all these men and causing the earth to be overrun by Varna Sankara. You know, and those whose and those whose family traditions are destroyed, they also go to hell. So the heck with that. I'll avoid killing my. You know, really, what I want to do is avoid killing Dronacharya and Bhishma Dev. You know, and all of his friends and relatives on the other side. So he had a philosophy to 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 uh, you know calling on the Vedic. You know, this and that, this and that. But Krishna was just standing there. He, he wasn't agreeing with him. He gave him a little bit something back, which is more or less on the uh, you know Chakya side. To, give up this uh, weakness of heart, get up and fight, you know, it doesn't become you. But there's nothing in intrinsically transcendental about that. Only when Arjun said, I have no idea, I'm lost, and, I might, uh, and the, the, uh, the, the whole battle is imminent, you know, there's no time to waste, therefore I'm surrendering to you as, as, as a guru. Now instruct me, and the whole relationship changed. So until one comes to that point, there's no saying what you're going to get into. You know, you, I mean, along with your, just like we had the earliest devotees back on you know, 26th Second Avenue, they were speculating here and there, you know, and, and they even went to India and came back on the same ship, Jaladuti, you know, they went to Jaladuti. <laughs> the same Prabhupada came, I agree with Kirnana, went to India. What good did it do them? Basically, it did a lot of good because they saw that they had no idea what to do, and they came back and they found their guru right there, three blocks away from where they were living. But the point is, is that they were mixing it up with the hallucinogens and who knows what else and illicit sex and this and that, you know. So, so that's what's going to determine your next life, not your speculations on this and that, your actual activities. So you're, you're, you're in the present age, you're bound, you're practically 100% sure of, of getting into uh, activity that's going to degrade you, you know. Now, if you, come, if you also have a mix a little Krishna in there, you're chanting the holy name a little bit, then that will protect you from losing the human form of life. But you can go through all kinds of suffering and who knows what kind of you know, birth you get, a human birth. So the point is you, we're lost. Andaya tanda the blind leading the blind. 
And even though you may have some inkling of, of the truth, without direct habit, having a, a guide, you know, Prabhupada was cutting out all the other the, the stuff. He was saying, no, 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 I'm, I've you know, spilled my blood writing these books. Read these books. Read the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And so many times he gave the example. The Bhagavad Gita has been around for a while, uh, in, in quite a while in English. But no one knew what to do after reading the Bhagavad Gita. I read it in the little Penguin edition. I had no idea. You know? But when you read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, there's no question what you're supposed to do. Surrender to Krishna. <laughs> so so it's, uh, it's, that's really the danger of the age. That's why I said Lord Chaitanya went to South India and there's all these crocodiles swallowing people up with the false philosophies. That's the danger is, in this world, is the, is the craziness where people don't know what to believe, what to do, the complete confusion. And that's, that's why, you know, the, the uh, Krishna conscious movement, based on these wonderful Shastra Prabhupada gave us, is the answer to the world's problems. We're the shock troops. So, so strap on your, your, your uh, vest, your, your bulletproof vest, and go out there and <laughs> help the people. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.